Hi, my name is Ellie, and I'm the visual artist for Game Immunity. Immunity is a top-down action hack-and-slash game that's heavily inspired with traditional Japanese culture. You play as Mei, a girl who serves under her master and has to protect the shrine from demons while her master is away. Your job is to fend off the enemies and survive for as long as possible. Seems pretty simple, doesn't it? As visual artist, my main role was to complete the concept art, character designs, environment designs, UI and menu designs, and overall aesthetic feel to the game. As you can see, the visuals of the game is inspired by traditional Japanese culture, from the kimono inspired by the design of the traditional shrine maiden outfit, to the Japanese shrine and the training grounds. For the game overall, I decided to go for a colour palette that consists of shades of pink to imitate the colour of cherry blossoms. Cherry blossoms are mostly found in Japan and are loved by everyone for its vibrant pastel pink colour. At the very start of the project, I created visual mood boards by gathering lots of references from other games that I felt had important links to the art style I wanted to achieve. As you can see, Eastwood has influenced me with some of the designs that are shown in-game. For example, the red gate entrance to the Shrine in Immunity is inspired by some of the door designs in Eastwood. The oriental-themed locations in Eastwood are also very deserted and the surrounding buildings look like they haven't been tampered with in ages. My idea for the setting in Immunity is an abandoned oriental-themed location that was once inhabited by humans, which is inspired by Eastwood's setting design. Another game that has influenced me to develop the style of my game is another beautiful game called Sword and Sorcery. The main locations of the game is set in a forest and there are many warm colours that make the art style and setting appealing to the eye of the player. The use of lighting in the art and setting is most important which inspired me to make use of the natural warm colours of the sunlight and moonlight when designing the setting in Immunity. I wanted to focus on natural lighting, as Japan is well known for its natural landscapes. For the rest of the pre-production, we used surveys, questionnaires, focus groups, mood boards and influences to prepare us for the production of our game and receive feedback. With this primary research, we gathered feedback from other people which gave us a better idea of what to add to our game to make it better tailored to what our audience wants. For example, we've asked what weapon they'd prefer for the protagonist to have, and from what we've gathered, we ended up having a sword get the most votes. We also implemented that into our game. We also prepared a presentation pitch to present our games and ideas, and wrote a script for the entire team to read off from and memorise. In the pitch, we went through everything we've done for the pre-production, and how we implemented it into our game, from the visuals and style chosen from the results in the surveys, the sound design, and the mechanics of the game. The most effective research we've conducted is definitely the influences and the surveys. The influences gave the entire team a better idea of the overall design and mechanics to implement into Immunity from other games, and the surveys provided us with an insight on what the audience wants for our game, and how to improve and implement these ideas. As an entire team, we all focused on our set tasks that were assigned and listed in our plan of action sheet and production schedule. The director of our team, Shuab Islam, is the generalist who also keeps us all on task. He helps out with everyone, the visual artist, the sound designer, and the programmer. He helped with the enemy designs and animations, the programming, and with some of the sound editing. In the production, we all communicate and help each other out every day. It's important for everyone in the team to be informed and to keep up to date with their daily tasks and to prioritise the most important tasks first. 
As for myself, I carried out my role by communicating with the director and other team members, discussing my ideas for all the individual art assets for the game. When we eventually ran into a problem, we discussed how to resolve it as a team and agreed together on what to do. I usually help with problems to do with either pre-production or anything visual related and it be solved and discussed with either the director or the programmer. Sometimes when we all have different ideas and fail to agree with each other, we'd hold a vote to agree and disagree with certain ideas and reason until we eventually come to a conclusion that we all agree on. When I'm faced with visual problems, however, I'd question myself. Do I have enough time to finish this? What are the priorities currently? Is there an alternative? I had taken to mind of the time we had available and thought of more realistic choices to get my tasks done and complete to keep up with the high priority tasks. I learned that I should get the main art assets done before other minor assets so I won't have to waste time working on the lower priority task first. Our game is to constantly stick with an oriental Japanese theme to create an immersive experience that imitates the feel of Japan. In Okami, it has the recognisable Japanese sounds that we took inspiration from to implement into our very own game. At the start of the sounds, it has an instrument being played quite loudly, which shows the game is about to start by making the instruments loud. Then as the sound progresses, it fades and gets quieter and low, showing that the character is not doing anything. But that changes when the player does something, because the intensity of the sound increases and it gets louder with the tempo and frequency picking up. In our game, we want similar sound effects and intensity change like Okami. We want our sound intensity to change quickly depending on what the player is making the character do. This will make the gameplay engaging because the player won't get bored listening to just one sound and will keep them on edge with different sounds and different intensities in the background while playing the game. The music in our game was created by the music students in our very own college and we were given a variety of different music and sounds to use and choose from. When we had trouble deciding on the right sound for our game, or really further improved, the sound designer and the game's director would attempt to edit it with Adobe Audition, an audio editing software, and FMOD, another editing software, used as a plugin for Unity. A problem I had faced with the audio is being unable to use all the sounds because there were too many and because there were some sounds that just don't fit with the Japanese theme of our game that we went for. I ended up learning how important timing is when editing and using sound effects and music, especially when we plan to use different intensities Though sound may be important in our game, what's also very important is the visuals. This area was hugely focused on and the art was discussed with the team a lot. The main goal was to imitate Japan and take the designs of Japanese culture into mind when I picture and design the art for our game. All of our visual assets were created in Asprite which is a sprite editor and pixel art creating software. Our sprite is made strictly for creating pixel art, and I was sure I could rely on it to make all of our visual assets following a pixel art style, whether it was to create still image sprites or animations. It also included useful features for our game, such as being able to create sprite sheets of our animations which made it easy to implement the animations into Unity. A problem we unfortunately faced was with some of the animations and constantly changing the mechanics of it with the main character. We'd repeatedly discussed this 
and keep in mind of the drawbacks and limits when creating some of the mechanics for the different animations. For example, for the main character, the attack animation would look off and not meet the expectations of the director, with the arms not moving in time with the slash. I had to redraft and redo the character and remove the arms, as well as redo the running animation without the arms. Making the player constantly move was a good idea though, as it makes the game enticing. I learnt that animation, especially pixel art animation, must be heavily exaggerated to give it life and make them more appealing to the eye. The main goal when making the game mechanics was to make it fast, relentless and smooth. To live up to its hack and slash genre, we had to keep these three things in mind. The game mechanics were made in Unity using C Sharp. The director and the programmer definitely encountered several problems with the game mechanics. Eventually, they had to either be fixed, changed or removed due to the lack of time they had. An example would be contemplating on whether to give the main character an extra weapon or to create a shop in the game. Unfortunately, we didn't have time to implement any of these into our game and had to leave it out and focus on the core game mechanics. From all of this, we learned to manage our time properly and focus on the core game mechanics first so the game would be playable. If I was given another week of production, I would have liked to work on more of the environment assets for the game, to make the stage more visually appealing and not look so plain. I would have added cherry blossom trees that are animated, with petals gently falling down, as well as adding a gong and other various props to the stage as well. If I had more time, then I would have loved to put more effort into the design of the stage. I would have added more animations too, especially to the environment assets. I plan to animate an old torn flag blowing in the wind, but unfortunately I didn't have enough time to finish it and add it to our game. It's optional, but the stage would have been less empty if I added more environment assets. This is the end of this commentary. I'm Ellie Vong, the visual artist for my team's game, Immunity. Thank you for listening, and give our game a try!